want, if you want one to one, uh, just you have to make an appointment, you have to call Mauricio, M.A. Mauricio, either send him an email or give him a call. These are the time that he has. So it's Wednesday for two hours, 11 to one, which is before your choice, or four to six, room, or six to seven, on top of what I gave you last time. Everybody remember that. Mm -hmm. Don't take a picture, I want to add to it. Just wait, don't waste your time. <laughs> and and for if you want one-to-one -one pr privately, question and answer, again, uh, this is the time, will be every week. Now, aside from that, this is another workshop for two hours, so please write it down. If this is tomorrow, 1.29, and uh, will be 12 to 2. Room, I mean, building 15, room 1828, which is library, and 21, which is Monday, 5 to 7, room 15, I mean, building 15, room 2919, and again, uh, 2257, the same room. And this could be repeated anytime they have time, they let me know and I'll put it on the board or next time put it on the blackboard or wherever. Uh, there are several of you who may need still a little bit extra help that will do it for you, okay? And basically that will be, and also I gave you place areas time, which is he's always available. I don't know whether any of you have gone to him or not. Yes, he, okay. And on top of that, of course, we have to give you your homework. So these are your homework assignment for next week. And those are problem number, question number, questions number one and four on your handout, handout which is, I believe, is pages four and five. One is on page four, the other one is on page five. You can, we can go over that because I'm going to do one of them today in class. And I want you to use the similar procedure for finding the moment about X, Y, and Z. And then also the rest of it, which is new subject, 71, 74, 77, and 80, which are couples and then 82, 96, 102, 114, 124, and 128, which are equivalent system, et cetera. We, we, when we get there, we will discuss the detail. Oh, but after today's lecture, probably you should be able to do the first two rows of homework. The last two will remain until I explain it to you. There are again 12 problems there, okay? And the first two rows, you should be able to do it this weekend. Any question before I start? Yeah. Uh, the same chapter. Chapter four is about uh, equilibrium of rigid body, totally different. But that's when the application of a static. By the end of this chapter, basically application of the, all the principle of a static being covered. Everybody understand. Then after that, we are going to use to solve equilibrium of the rigid body and then some trusses, frame, etc. Okay, now there is an easy way of doing some of the questions that you answer in this homework. And many of you came to the office hours today and we were discussing it. Some of you are still not showing up. I hope you go there. Wherever you go, all of you, many of you need to discuss this question with somebody and get the right answer from them. Everybody understand that. If you are not doing it, you are going to fall behind or something. Uh, is not right because these are not easy questions to be answered. So no, the best students still have some question here and there. But there are easy way of doing it and there are difficult way of doing it. Just to show you what I said last time, which is the summary, that the two methods that sh I show you is this. This is repeat, this is nothing new here. Let's say that we have here a force. This is just simply showing what we have done in the past, which is has a, uh, a vector representation of 2i minus 3j 
uh, uh, plus k just kilonewton, for example. And let's say this is applied to a point A. Doesn't matter where point A is, so we can put it anyway. So you want to, this is the A, this is for F. And point A has the coordinate of 4, 3, 5. Meter must be there. And let's say that one way of doing that, I said if you want to calculate moment about O, everybody knows how to do that. Is that correct or not? O is a position vector. O, A cross product of F. Is that correct or not? Let's do that. Just this is repeat. All of you have done it. There's nothing new there, but I'm doing it. So for you to see that M, O become equal to R, O, A cross product of F, if we are using cross product, which for this problem simply become, because this is 0, 0, 0, so it become, of course, I, J, K, and then become 4 minus 0, 3. I just made it very simple because I want you to get the idea. The numbers is not important. And then the, the, co uh, the uh, component of the force, which is 2, and as you see, minus 3 and 1. Of course, everybody knows how to expand this. When you expand this, this become equal to 18i plus 6j minus 18k. And the answer would be kilonewton millimeter, which has a magnitude. This is moment about point. Now, here is what we talk about moment about the line. This is, this right now what I have done here, if I, this is vector MO become a, a vector applied at point O, yes or no? That's MO, it has, <coughs> this is MO. Now, it has three projection, MX, MY, and 18, 6, <coughs> and minus 18. Now, you can use this method if you want, to, as I said it before, to calculate all your moment about every axis. Is that correct? Now, if somebody says, put about this axis, it still is parallel to X. Let's say this is the axis, and you want to, somebody said, find in respect to the X. As long as that is parallel to X, you say, OK, who cares? I can put O, or I can put here O prime. And then put here X prime, Y prime, and Z prime there, and take the moment of that force about point. Then you have, again, moment about X prime axis, Y prime axis, and Z. Which one of the tenth, you should have done it this way. You should have relocated the O for the tenth problem, which was problem, I don't know, 149 or one, because the distance between the two forces were not given. Anyhow. I don't know how you did that one, but that's another. Now, the way that it is in the solution manual is this. You have to pick up, if I want to take the moment of this force about point <coughs> x axis, I have to pick up a point on the x axis, yes or no? That could be this point, this point, that point, or could be O, yes or no? And that's what they did. In the solution manual, you see this. Mx, please write it down. Mx equal to, <coughs> although I explained that before, but now that you have your homework, maybe you are understanding it be better. Is that correct or not for everybody? So you, they write it like that. The lambda of this line, of course, is I. Is that correct or not? Yeah. So they use this formula, I, dot product of a M, which is a moment about a point on the line, which should be O or any other point. But doesn't matter. O is the best point because it has a coordinate of 0, 0, and zero, so therefore MO, and then of course this is the magnitude, and this is this direction, yes? But if I write this one, again in the determinate format, this is I, this is triple product. I don't have to put IJ here, because this dot product becomes a scalar number, yes or no? Then you have one, zero, and zero, then MO is sitting there, I have to put there four, three, five, and then I have to put 2 minus 3, 1. So you have this option versus this option. Where, what do you think the answer is here? Look, this is 0 and 0. Instead of i, you have 1. So it becomes, again, 18. Is that correct? So the answer is, of course, you have to put i here because this is the magnitude. That is its direction. So here they come up with 18i again. Similarly, you can change i to j, and the k, you get the moment about x-axis, <coughs> y-axis, and z-axis. 
choice is yours. But if you are using the solution manual, at least understand that this is the method that they are using it, which I did not recommend it. I said use this method. Everybody understand it, yes? However, if the line is there and the force is there, which has nothing to do with your X, Y, Z axle lock problem, I don't know what, what problem did your homework you had. One of the homework was like that. Yes, well, I asked you to find the moment about I, then you do that. Is that correct or not? Now, problem number, there is three problems there which I have really much, I have a lot to talk about those three problems which I wanted you to do first, which you have done it first. Now, let's see whether there is an easier way than this, even this one or that one to get to this solution to some of that problem. One of them is the barn or the wall that you want to turn it around. The other one was the part of a boat that was hanging there. Remember everybody? Yeah. Now, to do that, those problems, you have to understand this. That first of all, when we have, please write it down. This is a technique that everybody uses, but I'm summarizing for you to see that in many of these problems, we don't need to use any cross product or dot product. It's not required. Many of 3D problems turned into a 2D problem by using force distance. That's all you need. However, you have to understand that what the scenario is as far as the x, y, z axis. If we have a set of coordinates like that x, y, z, let's first understand that what we are talking about is this. Let's assume I have here a plate sitting here in the plane of x, z. Is that correct or not? Yes? This place, when there is a load applied on it, it's going to be rotated in three ways. One, if what I'm talking about, if let's say there are hinges here and this plate go like this. This is the rotation about the x-axis. This is the rotation about the y-axis and this is the rotation about the z. Yeah, that's what we are talking about. Mx, my, and mz. It could go positive, 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 which I showed you last time, is that correct? Or, or go negative, negative, negative. Is that understood? Then let's say, look at this now. I have here this plate, and this is, let's say, 100 pounds. Okay, and this is equal to 10 inches, and this is equal to 6 inches. And I want to find out the moment about x, y, z axis. This is a much simpler case that we were talking in uh, office hours. Can you find the moment of this 100 pound about x, y, z axis without using the cross product? Yes. Everybody see what I'm talking about? This force, put your hand here, everybody, around this side. Just go around the x axis. So <coughs> create a moment about x axis or a rotation about axis. And it is going to be clockwise as soon as you are standing there. Therefore, it is negative. negative. So mx, my inspection or by force distance method. Must be equal to 100 times what? 100 times six. 6, okay. And it should be negative, but that is, remember, that is I component of the MO. Everybody understand. But it's, but it's, you are only finding the magnitude of that, the sign of it is negative. Is that correct or not? But that is I, I component. Then, does this force causes this plate to rotate about the Y axis? No, because they are parallel. See, that's the rule. If the two forces and then axis, if the forces and axis are parallel, there is no reason that axis try to rotate. Is that correct or not? So that, but does it rotate? This plate rotate about z axis. Yes. yes so will be what? Hundred times. Put your hand again. This time, go around the axle. That's what you do. Use your right hand rule. If this is the first time you are doing it, use the right hand rule, and then use. This way, is that correct or not? So that has M y, Mz equal to what? 100 times 10, and it is, look at your thumb. It is positive plus 100 <coughs> times 10. Obviously, this becomes minus 600. Let's put a unit there, pound inch. And then this one becomes equal to 1,000 pound inch. Without using any cross product, I end up with MO to be equal to minus 600 I plus 0j plus 100k pound inch of moment. Notice the same, the same goal achieved. Is that correct or not? Yes? Of course, not always the problem is that simple. The problem is a little bit more sophisticated. Open your note, handout. Open your handout. There are four problems there, five problems. Number one, two, three, four, five. Number one and four is your 
your homework. Go to page four and five, of course. You see? These are actually some of, uh, if you see extra information, don't worry about that. This, this problem, the same format, look at this dot here, that uh, will be given to ME 218 student to calculate the stresses there and how this <coughs> behave structurally. Everybody understand that, that's part of So you see extra information, once there is a point there, there is a point there, that don't worry about it. All you have to do in this problem, find the moment of these forces about X, Y, Z, by inspection, everybody understand that, without using any cross product. Everybody said. Now, in order to show you how it, this, this works, I am going to do problem number three for you. So go to the next page, page uh, five. And I'm going to do that, or we are going to do it together. I asked the question from you, and you should be able to answer that. But we need to find our eraser. Where are they? Who took our efforts here? Oh, there it is. I put it there. OK. <laughs> so therefore, I need to draw this on the board here for, for you all to see. Of course, you have it in your hand. OK, the problem is as follows. So problem number, which one is? Oh, here it is. Can I, you see one of your hand up? Please. I have extra, I didn't bring it with me, but let me draw a plot in the system. Here it is. We have here a rod sitting in the direction of the x axis, and then there is connected to another rod in the direction of the z axis, so this is going to be our z. And this is our y as usual, z axis. And this rod has nine inch in this direction, nine inch here for the total of 18 inches. And this leg is 18 inches. And there is a force here, 40 pound in the direction of x. There is a force here, 30 pound in the direction of negative y. There is a force here in the z direction, 75 pounds. And there is a force here in the y direction, equal to 80 pounds. And let's call this one point O, the way they call it here, A, B, C. Correct? Thank you. The idea is, if you want to find the moment of all these forces about point O, one method that you are, should be now familiar after doing all your homework is the cross product method, because this is a 3D problem, yes or no? So cross product method is lengthy. By the way, you don't get much out of that, because what you see there, it is, uh, this was how much was that? That was about 75, 75 pounds, so it should be parallel. And then, all you have to do, which I have it here, MO equal to. So this is what you write, MO, moment about O, if you are using cross product, which I'm as not asking you to do. But if you cannot do it by inspection, do it this way, check your answer. Everybody understands, because most of you are familiar with this. Is that correct? MO equal to R, you are taking over ROC, cross product of FC, which has one component there, plus R. OB, cross product of force at B, which has two components, one along the X, one along the Y. You have done that in your homework, so all of you are familiar. Plus ROA, cross product of FA, then you said determinant, 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 then you get IJK, 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 it takes a few minutes, is that correct? Then you add all the I's together, all the J is K, so you have the moment about all three axes. Yes or no? That's one way. Now, this method is good to get there. But basically, if this becomes a design issue and we want to find out what is happening to this rod, if this rod, for future reference, you don't know it yet, if this rod rotate this way, this has become a torque or a torque. Somebody asked me, what is the torque? Torque, difference the torque at the moment. One component of the moment become a torque, you don't have to do, know it now, but that item is going to rotate like this. Is that correct or not? 
So that's the torsion. While you put another moment like that, that become a bending. Everybody understand. But that comes for future classes, not yet. For time being, I want to feel that. I want to not to use our cross product, which come up with some number without realizing. I want to see how this assembly behaving. Or, or is it turning around the x-axis? If you are turning it this way or that way, everybody under. Does it turn about the y-axis? If uh, it turns around the y-axis, and I, this is attached to the wall, there are some bolting system. I can see which way the bolt is being pulled out, which way the bolt is going in by finding the direction of the moment. Do you getting what I'm saying? That this feeling is important for engineer, not our cross product. Our cross product is a math. You put it in your calculator, as you, some of you have your, you get the answer there. That's what I said, don't use it. Whenever you do that, you don't learn anything. Is that correct or not? Whenever you copy the solution manual or you put it in front of you, you change the number. Okay, they did it this way, I do it that way. You don't learn anything. The, what, the time that you learn this material, when you independently, you read the question, you connect the concept to the idea, the ideas to the problem, and then you solve the problem. Now you do 50% of it, 60% of it, that's much better than the other method. Everybody understand that. However, when you get stuck somewhere, or you have a need, you go there, you come to me, or whatever, you solve that, you ask somebody else to help you out. Is that correct or not? Now, let's do this. Now, in order, you can organize ourselves, put this in a table if you want, or other way around. So let's put it on the table, see whether that makes it simpler. But you don't have to, but that's it. You put forces here, then you write MXs here for all the forces, MY there if you want. But notice, this is only for 3D problem. You don't this, do this for 2D problem. 2D problem is one dimensional. Is that correct or not? Yes? All right, now let's look at each force. Look at this force at A. So put that force here, 75 pound, look at A. Now look at this one. If you have a force here applied to this member and pushing it this way, is this going to rotate about X axis? This force causes this, the whole assembly to rotate about X axis or not? No, why? This is the reason. If the axis is here, and the force goes through it, you see it crosses it. There is no rotation, the rotation has to be a distance. This is, doesn't have a distance, it goes right through that, this doesn't rotate. So write it down in your notes. When the force and the axle intersect, there is no moment about that axle. Of course, earlier I mentioned it, you wrote it down. If the axle and the force are parallel, you all answer me, does not cause any Rotation. The only fine time it is the rotation is there when you get into this scenario. Look, this is the axle, and I put here now a force upward. Everybody understand? If I put the off guard, this is going, this is what you answer me there. Is that correct? Everybody saw that, but this is what the case. This is the force, this is the distance, there is a rotation this way. If I push it down, the rotation changes. Is that correct or not? That is exactly what you need, nothing else. None of this is necessary. Now tell me that. Does this instrument rotate because of this? Not about the, I'm not talking about the other three force, only this force. Does it rotate this instrument about the x-axis? No. Does it rotate about the z-axis? Notice they are parallel. But does it rotate about the y-axis? Yes. yes. How much is that? 75 times 18. That's one thing you want to know. Seven, oh, which one was it? Y X zero, se 75 times 18. The only question is whether it is plus or it is minus. Look at it. Is it going this way? So it is going like that. Is it plus or minus? If it's going like that, if it's going that way, it is plus. It's going like this or it's going like that? Which way? That way. So therefore it is <coughs> minus. Right? What you just did here is this. Which one is easier? Or which one is better understandable? You see, there you are, you are an engineer. You are know exactly what you are doing. Is, is that correct or not? This is just math. If you do this, sit down at home. That's the answer. As simple as that. You are laughing. That's right. You just do this. <laughs> All your problem 53, 149, I do, I'll show you that problem 53 or the other one can be done with this method, can be done in 
10 to 15 seconds. Everybody understand that. But learn it first. Okay, let's get more. So, oh. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Okay, let's talk about this 30. All right, 30 pound force going down at point B. What's the action of that one? Does this one rotate this about the Z axis? Actually, this is a 2D problem. Look at it. Is that correct or not? Yes? 30 times what? 18. That's about Z axis. Yes or no? Yes, 30 times 18. Is it moving this which way? This way or that way? This way or that way? Negative. Negative. That's right. Does this one cause this instrument to rotate about the Y axis? It's parent. Does it cause the rotator the about the no. X axis? No. <laughs> okay, that's part of this, not the whole thing, because there are two forces there. Is that correct or not? Yes? And finally, let's put one more to So 40, which is simpler than that. This 40 pound force, this is 30 pound, I'm sorry. 40 pound force, which is at point B. Okay. This one is easier than all of that. Does this cause any rotation about the x-axis? No. Y-axis? No. Z-axis? Yes. Oh, no. No. no, nothing. Actually, this is zero, zero, zero. Look how simple this is. These two together is the second cross product. The first row is this one. Row two and three is the result of that one. You can check it at home. Everybody under. And finally, we get to the point force at C, at point C, we have 80 pounds going like that. Does that one create any moment about <laughs> x-axis? You see, it is turning it like that. Is that correct or not? If turning it like that, what is it? It is plus 80 times what? Nine. Nine. Very good. 80 times 9. Does it rotate any rotation about the y-axis? No. You know why you are answering all that so nicely? Because you already got the feeling about the moment about x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis many, many times. Is that correct or not? And finally, does it create any moment about z-axis? Be careful. Yes. You see, the distance to z-axis is how much? The distance to the z-axis is 18, and it is going, going plus. OK. So 80 times 18, and that's plus. And then this is the answer. And this last row is this cross product. I, there's nothing wrong with that. But be sure that you learn this because this is what you are going to do. Yes. What is you are going to do in future for all your ME 218, 219, CE3, or 4, 5, 6, or I don't know, wherever you go to do any design, that's what you do. This way, not that way. You never see that again in your design courses until you go to graduate school. Is that correct or not? Of course, you see that in a lot of other dynamic or math courses or so. Anyhow, if I add this all together, this is moment about what? Yes. Yes. These are the moment about the? Wow. That's the moment. That's I, J, K of those formulas. Okay, so saying so that the answer for this problem is, you can check it at home, so you will see that that's the same way you do the problem number one and four with the same method. This becomes, you just put a summation here, you put 720, and this becomes minus 1,350, and this becomes 900, because this is plus and minus. Of course, the uh, units, that you can put it on top, is pound inch or kilonewton meter or whatever, which apply to all the numbers. And you don't have to do it this way. As long as you calculate moment about x, y, z, you don't need a table either. Is that correct or not? Which takes us to the next question. And that's question number uh, 53. Is that correct or not? Yes? OK, let's use the this method for problem number 53, not the one in the solution manual. OK? <laughs> or not the one. Oh, yeah, that's the one probably you, most likely you look at it, didn't you? How many of you did look? I don't, I'm not looking at you, so you don't have to tell me. <laughs> but that's the unavoidable. Somebody left his pencil in my office. So, All right, this is the question that was raised during your, I mean, uh, one of your homework is this. There is a x, I'm just explaining to you. I don't have to use any number. There is a wall on the, happened to be the wall of this barn was in x and y-axis, yes or no? And it was tilted. 
So, okay, this is exactly what I was telling here. It was tilted backward, <coughs> and you want to bring it forward. In order to do that, somebody must go back there, push it, not one person. If this is a big wall, you cannot do it by yourself. Is that correct or not? Everybody understand? You have to bring it forward. In order to bring it forward, this is a rotation about the x-axis, yes or no? They have given you that number. They said that uh, we need require the uh, as the, uh, what, no, what number did they give you? They said mx, it is required to, in order to tilt this wall forward, we need a moment of 4,728 pound foot. Okay? So you have that much moment going this way about the x-axis. Yes or no? Now, however, the way they have, they have given to you, there was a here, a <coughs> line here, a line there. They call this one a C, for example, and this one was D and F. And then, of course, when you put this uh, cable on the wall, attach it to the wall, and then you put the machine here or wrench that you pull it, you tighten the, the belt, the belt create, I mean, the cable, there is a tension in it, and the tension causes the wall come forward. Is that correct or not? And the way you saw the, your solve your problem, which is absolutely correct, was like that. You end up with two forces there, yes or no? And one force was here, and one force was there at D. Is that correct or not? Yes? yes. Correct? Now, these forces have moment about. So one way of doing it is this. Take the moment about point O, so use R cross product, R cross product, et cetera, et cetera. Or use the moment about x axis either way, all of them. Either use this method or the, the other method that get to the answer, yes or no. However, when you use this inspection method, this is simpler than all. You see what happened here? You have to write AB. AB end up, TAB, let's write it down. T, this is what you should have end up. T. A, B end up to be, because it was given, end up to be 15i minus 180j plus 180k pound. Is that correct or not? Because the magnitude of that, it was not given. T, A, D was, T, D, F was, T, this was A, C, I'm sorry. B was here, C is there, that's the same thing. T, D, E was not given, but that was equal to its magnitude, <coughs> times, this part is nothing to do with the moment, that's part of a static. So this is one and a half minus 14, 12 divided by 18 and a half. I believe they were, they, they, these are in uh, foot or inches, I think it's foot. Is that correct? Yes, foot. Doesn't matter because I'm, as I said, discussing foot over foot. So that, that's the two force, right? Now look. You need the moment about the x-axis, yes or no? So let's look at this differently. This force has a component like this. Does it have any moment, the y, x, y component? Does it have any moment about the x-axis? No. Does this one have any moment about x-axis? No. Only one that has moment about x-axis is z component. So that all I need is this. Is that correct? That's the z component of that force. So the moment mx, which should be equal to 4,728, equal to 180 times this height. That height was given equal to how much? 12. Then the moment of this one, but this is the same format. x doesn't have any moment. y doesn't have any moment. Only z has the moment. The z portion of that one is this, 12 over 18 and a half. Is that correct or not? Yes. Times TDE, become a fragment. Multiplied by this height was given differently. That one height was equal to how much? 14 feet. The sum of these two, because look at that, that's the problem. That's the solution to that problem. Can you find TDE? Yes or no? With one line. Yes? Yes. Good. <laughs> is that how you used it? No. No, okay, good. <laughs> okay, now use it from now on. Now let's go to problem number 152. 
the boat that you have struggling so much about it. It's actually much different. Are you surprised? Yeah. Why? Are you good? Did you get it? Yeah. Good. That's what I'm saying there. So it is much simpler than what you think. This when you use this one, there is nothing there. No feeling about it. This is exactly you know how the force is acting, which direction it is, is that now let's go to the boat problem. So in boat problem, this is the same scenario again. I'm going to erase that and put that one here. That one, some of you have a pro problem with it, but some of you didn't ask the question. First of all, <laughs> let's put it this way. This was, uh, I think there is a pulley here. Is that correct or not? Yes? There was this man standing here. This, there was a rope here attached from this point going to this pulley, going down to the boat, and going up. And here is the boat, the weight of the boat hanging there. Yes or no? The magnitude of this tension, let's say, this, it doesn't matter what is given, what is then They turn around, they can give you three problems with the same idea in it. What is important here is how to calculate moment about x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, because that was the idea they're presenting to you. Let's go, for example, about the z-axis. Let's say that they, they, we want to find out the moment mz. This is the question. I don't know. There are two, three problems there. All is the same thing. Now, first thing first that you have to understand this, the tension in the cable is t. Is that correct or not? You are drawing this free body diagram. Yes or no? So you should erase everything, draw your free body diagram. This was a question that many people came to my office about it because they did not understand the nature of the problem. This is the same rope going around the pulley, going back to the pulley. We discussed that long time ago. The tension remained the same. Is that correct? Or I believe in one of the problem, the tension was given equal to 82 pounds. Is that correct or not? Yes? However, there are three of them now. Look, this is the tension, this is the tension, this is the tension because you are cutting it there. Yes or no? These two are vertical, yes? So this is 82J or total for total of 100, uh, 164J going down. Is that correct or not? Yes? Then you have to write this one as a vector, yes? Oh, sorry, because this is not the magnitude of that T, but it was T, what was it? I don't forgot. What was T, what was the, that, the letter format for that one? Where is that point called? Is it A or B? Let's call it here. That's it. So therefore, this you have to write the tension TAB. Is that correct or not? But the magnitude that still is 82, correct? If the question is, what is the moment about z-axis, look, this one doesn't have any moment about z-axis. This one doesn't have any moment about axis. x component of that has <coughs> moment about x-axis, yes or no? y component doesn't have, of this one even, and z component. <coughs> All you need x component of that force. Everybody understand that. That's as simple as that. The <coughs> moment mz is equal to <coughs> tx. You find that one, of course, when you expand. This, this one, you have done it. Is that correct or not? Multiply this height. That height was how much? I forgot. That height was? Six, eight? What was it? Six. Come on, guys. You did your homework. You don't remember it? Open the book. I don't remember it. You did the homework. How, how much? 10.5? 7.75. OK. This height was? This height was 7.75. That's it. That's it. That's the answer. Yes? I'm, sh I'm sure that you now understand what, what your preference from now on should be. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes? All the 3D problem in future, when you even go to next chapter, I give you a 3D problem. Try to use this method. If it is too complex, look here, the advantage is this. Let's put it this way. These forces are all parallel to x, y, and Z. And many times that's the case. Is that correct? But if the, there are three, four forces going in different direction and then you want to use cross product and that gives you the advantage, use it. I'm not saying that. That would give you the answer. However, learn this method as well. Is that correct or not? Because especially when you are talking about moment about x axis, y axis, and z axis, many components do not have any moment about certain axis. There are lots of zeros there. So don't waste your time by using cross product. Make sense? So these two are now solved. Can you do that by yourself now, those two? 
Of course, you do it. If you have any question, you will come to my office. Is that correct or not? But one thing, you, when you go to those uh, workshop, please do not ask them to do the homework for you or to help you. When they do the homework for you, the effect of that homework or the advantage of that homework already disappear because I don't want you just you act like a calculator. This is the problem. I have seen a student in the past come to me and say, well, I did all the homework. I got full mark on the homework. Then I said, OK, sit down. Let's talk about it. How many times did you refer for each problem to here, to me, to somebody else? Many times. OK, OK. So then you didn't do the homework. You see, That's not the way to do it. Is that correct or not? The homework, when you do it, is when it comes to you first. Is that correct? Your idea comes to you. Of course, this is a homework. You are a student. What you should do this, you look at the problem, you should somehow relate that problem to the concept that was discussed in the class, and then you go look at my example or a book example, then you say, okay, this is what route I should take. So you go forward, still there are maybe questions left that you have to answer. There was many of them in this set of homework. Now let's move on. The next subject is interesting subject, so let's look at it. This is totally new. So you want to learn it. So this is the subject of the, the second row of the question there. So because before I tell you what those are, I want you to do this for me. There is a rod here. OK. So let's say this is point A, this is point B, this is point C. They are in different distances. This is point D. And at point E, I have here a force of 10 pounds keep going up. And at point B, I have 10 pounds going down. And let's say this is from A to B is 4 inches. From B to C is 6 inches. Oh, let's call this one C. Yes. From C to D is another 4 inches. This is a very simple problem, but it shows you a fact that we are going to see in a minute. Take the moment of these two forces about point A and tell me what number you get. What's the moment of this force about point A? It is 10 times what? 14. Plus or minus? This is very simple. You should do that. This is just 14 plus. Yes or no? What's the moment of this force about point A going this way? 10 times 4? Negative. So please write it down. 10 times 4. So the answer is 10 times 14 which is 140 minus 14, so 100 pound each of mole. Yes? Now let's take the moment about point B. Here, I changed the point. Yes or no? What's the moment of this 10 pound about point B? Zero. Zero. What's the moment of that point about point B? 10, ten times 10. ten. And it is? Positive. 10 times 10 equals 100 pound inch. Now let's take the moment about point C. What's the moment of this one about point C? Well, everybody should be able to do that. We are past this stage. This is very early moment of business. Yes or no? Yes? 10 times 4, is it? And this one, 10 times 6, also positive. So 10. The answer is 100 pound inch. OK. Can you guess what is the moment about D is? 100 pound inch. Well, I'm glad. See, 100, 100, 100. Yes? By the way, taking moment about this point E, which has 5 inches here, would be again equal to 100. Taking moment about here would be 100. Taking moment about what's happening here. Why this is the case? Is it anything special about these two forces? No. You said that the, the, the right word, but that's not, we don't know that yet, do we? <laughs> these are two forces equal and opposite. When two forces are equal, oh, this is very important to recognize. When two forces are equal and opposite, we call them a couple. This is not for every two force. The two forces are not equal. This is not happening. The two forces must be equal and Opposite. So that's the meaning of the couple. You just said it. Correct. Yes. Good. You went ahead, look at the book, and that's the, I wrote it down there here about the couple. Yes or no? I, I said it for everybody. 
I said, this, this row is about a couple. Is that correct or not? Yes. Those are forces. What is the idea behind the couple? See, that's the whole point. The moment of that couple, about every point is the same. Doesn't change. Is that correct or not? Yes? Notice I just don't have to prove it. I will prove it for you mathematically later. But look what I did. I took moment about A, B, C, D, E. All of them end up to be equal to 100 pound inch. They are all equal. So any other point I take, it will be the same result. Is that correct? So the idea behind the couple is when you have a couple, write it down, which are two forces equal or opposite, it doesn't have to be in this plane. It could be into this plane. This force going up, this force going down with the same magnitude is a couple. Yes or no? But this couple is about which axis? No, let's understand that. Look, you end up with 100 pound each of what? I, J, or K? Look at it. I, J, or K? K. 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 Therefore, this couple, which from now on, we show it like that. This is 100 pound inch. You will see that from in your structure from now on. You see lots of arrows like that. Of course, it goes counterclockwise, will be positive, because that's the net effect. The two forces cancel each other. Everybody see that? However, if the two forces come to on top of each other, which D become equal to zero, that is no couple anymore. Is that correct or not? So that is how the system works. In future, if you have a pipe system like that, and you put here a force here, a force here. These two forces are equal. This system is not going to rotate. Is that correct or not? Everybody understand that, yes? Because the moment of that one and the moment of that one about this center is, one is negative, the other one is positive, so it's zero. However, if I create this kind of action, you see, now this is going to be rotated. If there is an axle here at the center, of this, this pulley is going to rotate this way. Is that correct or not? And the amount of moment, which I can show it like that, this MO is equal to T times uh, radius, whatever the radius is, that, times 2. Because there is one here, one here, or become equal to T times diameter, which is the same thing. Is that correct or not? Yes? This is the... Now, don't get this wrong. This is a one-dimensional couple. So if you take a drill in your hand and you're drilling this way, I showed you that. This is, you are creating a couple about the Z. So this is, in actuality, what we have done here. This couple can be represented as a vector M of a couple. I'll put C because that's the couple. It doesn't have to be any special point. It could be any point. Must be equal to 100 k pound inch because that. However, if I take my drill and go vertically, the drill, uh, the couple is about the y axis. Similarly there will be about the x axis. However, if you take a drill and go through this, this panel, which I hope you don't do, okay? <laughs> so you go this way, yes, everybody, that. there is a couple, but this couple is this is the line of the couple. Is that correct? It has I, J, and K components. So the couple could be one-dimensional or could be three-dimensional. 3D and 1D. Everybody under, or 2D. doesn't make any difference. So you can have all of that. Everybody understood that. But the net result is the same. That means if I have two forces here going one up, one go equal, and opposite I'm creating a couple and the moment of this you should write that in your note put it in a box the moment of couple because this is the one you have to use in this homework the moment of the couple does not make any difference about any point would be the same is that correct or not for that reason I'm going to do one example quickly that you get the idea that how this works then you can do the rest of that through your homework and of course, I cannot fi finish the whole subject, but that will take care of the couple, at least for time being, which I said you can do the first row and the second row. Let me get my example somewhere from here. So if I can find it, where did I put my note? Professor, you have a question? Yes. I said the moment of the couple is equal to the, the same okay. everywhere. So, but you have to find the magnitude of that. It's about everywhere. Every point is the same. Right? I'll show you in a minute. What it, you see, look at the here. That's what I said. 
Look, the moment this couple about A was the same about B, what was about C, and what about D? And about E even goes here and here and here, still is there. So the moment is the same about any point. So you have to pick up a point which is easier than that to. Uh, but I'm looking for an example here. If I can find it, it should be somewhere in this pile. Yeah, I had a problem. Oh, here it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK, here. Now, this is that a good example for you to sort of get this, this question that you asked. OK, here we go. So here it is. This is 2D. I just do it in 2D, but 3D will follow. OK, let's say we have here a force F going that way. And there is a force F going this way, of course, minus F. So these two are equal and opposite. That's the, that, the technique. Yeah. Let's say that this distance is one meter. And this distance is two meter. That's the location of that point B. And then let's find out the location. This is our point of application at A and B. And then let's say that this is not in a scale again. This is half a meter. And this height is given four meter. The height is given from there to here, four meter. Is this a couple or not? Yes, two forces equal and opposite. Now, if I ask you what's the magnitude, first of all, you don't care about the point. It, this couple has a magnitude, yes or no? What is that couple? Yes, like the other one. Is it 100, 120, or 130? Is it plus or it is minus? We don't know. But we can do two, three things. We can take the moment about point O, because moment of a couple about every point is the same. Is that correct or not? Is that a good choice? Yes or no? Or do I have a better choice than that? Notice what I just said. The moment of this couple about every point is the same. Should I choose O or do I have a better choice? How about point A? Because they're all the same. But if I choose that, then the moment of that force about A is? Zero. zero. All I have to do is take the moment of that one. That's what I did here. I don't know whether you noticed that. When I took the moment about B, the moment of this one was zero. I only have to do that. This is the shortest one we wrote here. Is that correct or not? That's exactly what you should do. So you don't have to go around. Although the moment of this couple about every point is the same, but the easy point will be either A or B. Everybody understand that. This is the moment of couple. And we need the magnitude. This is a 2D. So we need the magnitude, the direction. Is it, is it plus K or? Minus k, yes or no? Because this is not a 3D problem. This is a 2D problem. Yes? Correct? It's like this one. Except the forces are in angle. Now, what you can do now, you break those forces into components. So I should give you the magnitude of force. So let's say the force F is equal to 5 kilonewton. Of course, this would be given. And let's say that this the angle is given, which is the same as this angle, is given equal to 30 degree. So that angle, which is equal to that angle, equal to 30 degree, which makes these two force equal and opposite. Yeah, the angle should be the same, correct? So make them a couple. The moment of a couple about every point is the same. I can take the moment about O. This is again repeat. O, A, or B. The best choice is either A or B. So I'm taking MA equal to MA. So let's put it this way. Is that correct? This is what you were asking, yes or no? Equal to what? All I have to do, break this force into two components, which you do, show, should show it either in dash line that you don't want to wood it. Yeah, I mean, all of them at the same time. This, so it, anyhow, let's show, show it in blue and in, in like that. This is 5 cosine 30 degree, and this is 5 sine 30 degree. Is that correct or not? Yes? OK, does this 5, 30, 5 cosine 30 has a moment about point A? Yes or no? This is simple. That time this distance, is that correct or not? Distance is how much? 2 meter and <coughs> half a meter. Therefore, m equal to 5. I write it in blue because that's what we have there. Cosine of 30 degree. Remember, I can break this in component. That's the rule we learned previously. Is that correct or not? Yes. So, 5 cosine 30 degree times with this, what distance? 2 and half. Is it plus or minus? Plus. plus. Very good. 
And then we have this one. Look at that one. Five times, because we have to take care of that. Five plus, let's, I don't know plus or minus. Five times sine of 30 degree, correct? What distance are we talking about this time? This time, this distance is that vertical distance from A to B, which is four minus three. Which way does it go? Put your hand there. Which way does it go? This, we should already learn it. This, we have done it in previous homework. Yes or no? And it is also plus. So five times 30 degree times four minus one, which is three meter. So these are meter, meter, those are pound, and that's also plus. So when you add these two together, these two together become equal to 18.3, positive, 18.3, uh, what is kilometer, meter cup. Where is the direction of it? Of course, it is plus, so it is plus k. Now, you want to be sure what we talk about here. You can go at home, take the moment about point B. Take the moment about point O. Take the moment, it will all be 18.3. But this is the simplest of all. Is that correct or not? Now, I can show you something else too. So if I break this one into component as well, do we have two couple here? You see, one couple and two couple. That's exactly what we did. Is that correct or not? Yes? yes? The moment of the couple actually again equal to four times this distance. Everybody, because look, the moment of this couple is four times this distance between the two. Yes or no? The moment of, because we are out of time, I'm going to give you a few more hints and I'll do more examples next time about 2D and 3D. But you try your homework first, go as far as you can. This idea should be there. Need a little bit more elaboration when it comes to 3D. Is that correct or not? However, if you have a force like this and like that, this is F, this is minus F, or whatever other way around. All you need is this distance D. Is that correct, which is perpendicular to the two? Yes? That will do it as well. Actually, you, this way you can find the shortest distance between. Now, here I have 18.3. Can I find the shortest distance between these two lines? Yes? 18.3 equal to force times this distance. Is that correct or not? Again, you have that in your homework. D equal to 18.3 divided by 5. That is kilo newton. Come on, guys, divide and listen to me. This is part of your homework. <laughs> you can find the shortest distance between two lines as well. Is that correct or not? Yeah. That, you don't have to go through geometry. OK, we are done with the lecture, so let's go through the quiz. So this quiz should be simple. Section two, oh, this is section three. Section two, thank you for this distribution there. Thank you very much. Yes, we just do this like that. Put everything aside, guys. How many people are here? One people left? Only three? All right. Five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Put, put your name down and I will explain the problem to you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, what happened? Oh, it's coming. Okay. That's all good. Five. Oh, you're short.